Hey guys, I've got the Driveline app, I hope you do too, because I'm gonna be taking this vehicle, the 2019 Dodge Challenger RT Scat Pack, that purple one, and I'm gonna drive it from here in New Hampshire to Portland, Maine, and it's gonna be a great route, and I'm gonna put it on this app, and I hope you guys can follow us. Nathan, you know what's plum crazy? Yeah, the car behind us. Yeah, that, and the fact that that car represents the most horsepower you can get for under $40,000. We'll tell you more. Oh look, there's a bee, Nathan. <laughs> That's puppy love. So what we have here, Nathan, is basically a neutered Hellcat. That's one way to look at it. Uh, how does it sound? It is different. Well, I think there's only one way to find out. Come on, guys. Dude, what the hell's missing? Supercharger. <laughs> so how much does this bad boy cost and what does it put out? Oh, well, it puts out 485 horsepower and it costs, it actually starts under $40,000. So. At a base rate, it's the cheapest, most powerful muscle car you can buy, but of course, it's not the cheap one here. No, and as is, well, it's plumb crazy. So you guys might be wondering, why do I want to pay those extras for the wider body and everything else? Well, this is according to Chrysler FCA. They put this car on a track next to a regular version of this car, right? And they were able to go two seconds faster around a road course track with this package. According to them, more rubber on the ground means more power to the ground, better suspension setup, all that means a faster car around a track. Yeah, now, uh, there is a driving embargo, Nathan, which means we can't tell you how this drives. No, we cannot, but... Until next Wednesday. Nathan, while we can't tell him how it drives, we can certainly let him listen to a scat pack. I can roll some video now of the Hellcat yeah. and the um, Red Eye. talk about how it drives but what I can tell you is I did an interview with the chief dynamics engineer uh -huh. and he told me how they've changed the suspension for this to make it a very track worthy beast uh -huh. so let's go to that interview but like I said we can't say how it drives at least not until next Wednesday okay and come back at you next Wednesday when we compare the Hellcat to the Red Eye yes yes interesting comparison between those two and then we can't tell you how it drives yes we really opened the tuning box on this for the chassis. Yeah. Uh, for, so for 2019, there's the, the uh, Scat Pack, you know, 392 right. Scat Pack. We have the 1320, which is a junior Demon, right? And has the Demon suspension. We did a unique tire. For the wide body Scat Pack, we wanted to make this its own thing, like the 1320 is its own thing. So we actually opened the box and retuned the whole suspension. So how did you retune it? What did you do to it? We have different spring rates. We have 26% stiffer front springs. We actually have the same rear springs. We went to bigger hollow sway bars. We went from a 32 front to a 34 hollow front, 32 hollow, 34 hollow, 19 hollow rear to a 22 hollow rear. You can tell we, uh, we stiffened up the front more than we stiffened up the rear. So that puts a little more stability in the car and having that stability in the car lets you drive it harder on the track. You've got more reserve grip at the rear so you can drive it harder on the turn. So this car, um, with this, this amount of tire at this output and the Hellcat brakes, you know, the brakes are gonna go all day. You know, you can go a t full 20 lap fade test like a race car when, on our fade test on, on this car with the stock brakes. But, uh, but with that size tire, you can drive it like you would drive a traditional lower powered car where you bend down to the apex and you start squeezing the throttle and your full throttle from the apex driving all the way out of the turn and you know we wanted to dial it for that and we focused more on lap time with this car than we would normally focus because that's just kind of not our thing with the challengers we're not trying to go after lap time usually we're trying to have them be just be really fun and you know responsive uh, especially for their size and you know drift and slide around this car is a little more precise a little more buttoned down and a little more serious so this car you drive when you drive it harder 
get, you know, hit your marks, but you drive the car harder, you will go faster. Whereas in a Hellcat and some of the other cars, sometimes you need to back off to really get your best lap time because you're, you're just trying to keep the car under you. And the 392 uh, Scat Pack wide body will run the same lap times on a two mile road course in Michigan that we use as a Hellcat narrow body with, you know, a couple hundred less horsepower. Well, that was interesting, Nathan, right? I mean, they did a lot of things to this to make it much more track -worthy. It's more than just a bunch of, you know, shocks and wider tires. Yeah, yeah. It's a lot of tuning, a lot of, uh, let's call it suspension magic. Yes. Uh, but you still, of course, don't get the supercharger. And that's kind of the magic in these cars. So right about now, as you're driving, normally you would hear the supercharger, but without it being here... Nope. Is that a driving impression? Nope, it's not, because I'm just simply saying what is here versus what is not here. Okay. So think about this, right? A Hellcat, a base Hellcat, starts at basically 60K. Mm-hmm. And then if you were to add the wide body, another 6,000. So you're at 66,000. That is true. Here, you're $20,000 less. That's, that's a lot more than a supercharger. That is indeed. And you guys have got to remember, and this is one of the crazy things, there's a lot of money that you have to spend to get the wide body package. $6,000. Do I think that's worth it? Nathan, if that hood looks familiar, it's because it's the old Hellcat hood, right? The new one has that kind of double nostril intake and this one now has inherited the old hellcat hood it also has check this out come over here look at this look my favorite feature it's got a hole just like the hellcat ah. so there are a couple differences in terms of the interior design but mainly well there's a b on the seat <laughs> so that's a quick way to tell the difference but if you were looking at this and you were looking at the hellcat you would definitely see the difference in the display oh look there's a b nathan you're right You're designing iconic cars like this. Are you worried about the fact that you know you're doing something that that has got such a long and storied history? Does that come into mind? Uh, you know, I think it's it's that's what gives this car a soul. The fact that um, we have pulled from from our past. You know, we started with the '70. We were influenced by the '71, and we just keep refining it. But I think that's the beauty of the Challenger is that it does pull from the past um, and evolves it and isn't trying to just reinvent it every time. Well, let's talk about colors. I got to tell you. That is one of my favorite, that gray right there. Destroyer gray. Yeah, that's really Me badass. too. <laughs> Me too. And then you can see uh, one of the new, this is actually the new Hellcat wheel uh, in Brass Monkey finish on there with the optional orange Brembos as well. I think that's such a great color combo on yeah, that. Yeah, it looks really badass. Talk yeah. about some of these other colors. What are you talking yeah, about? Yeah, you know, I talk a lot about, you know, our heritage and our past. And, you know, this is B5 blue here. This yeah. is another color that we've pulled from our past. Um, we have F8 green as well that uh, you see. And then Plum Crazy as well. Uh, and it's something that um, you know really is, is striking on these cars. If, you know, we, we have a good color palette that lets something be a little bit more subtle, but also you know pretty vibrant as well. And I want to keep de developing that as we go forward. Nathan, those are some beautiful roads. Yeah, and check it out. Set up. We've come all the way back to downtown Portland, and I'm going to hit the finish button right now. There we go. Yep, and I'll even put an image in there too. So that's our route. It was a really fun, beautiful route. And now you guys could follow along on Drive. Yeah, Driveline app. Just go to your phone and come and join us on this route when you're in Maine because uh, not only can you uh, drive like us, well, you can't drive like us. <laughs> no, don't drive like us. us. No, but, that would be a bad idea. But you can follow the route we've taken. Exactly. Hey guys, thanks for watching. Remember, check out tflcar.com for more news, views, and real world reviews. See you guys next time. Ciao. <laughs> <laughs>